words of power because we are kings and our words matter. When David sang and worshipped the Lord, when they played music instruments, when he arranged for a big party and ate well, there was eating and drinking and all of that, it was for the glory of God. It was uh, through that he was really exercising dominion, exercising his dignity, living in a dignified way and exercising delight. That was a positive thing which God enjoyed and appreciated and applauded. Oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast, and our eternal hope under the shadow. When is wealth good? When is wealth bad? Amos is answering very clearly. That's why I read this passage. Let me explain. Two things are said here which clearly expose this. Expose this whole passage and how to interpret it. Two things. One is the mention of David here. Have you noticed that? In verse 5. Who sing idly to the sound of stringed instruments and invent for yourself musical instruments like David. Now, as you know, David was a musician. He wrote the Psalms. He has given us wonderful Psalms. Today, even today's so songs are written based on what he has said. It's such a great blessing to the church today. Amazing Psalms he has written. He is an excellent musician. In his days, in the Old Testament days, in David's days, he appointed singers and musicians 24 hours. You know, he said in Psalm 34, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. It doesn't mean half an hour in the morning and half an hour in the evening, like a television show, you know. We'll have morning and evening sessions, you know. Half an hour worship in the morning, half... No, no, no. When he said, I will bless the Lord at all times, he meant all times. And he said, when he said, the praise will continually be in my mouth, he literally meant continually, so that he hired musicians... He hired singers and placed them in the uh, thing, in, this, in, the, in, the, in, in, in his country, in the place where he ruled, 
so that they will sing and play the music and worship and praise the Lord continually, 24 hours. So that every single minute of day and night, praise will go forth towards God's throne. That somebody will be praising God. They took ships just praising God. That's how much music was emphasized in his day. He brought that emphasis upon music, that worship. He loved it. He was a musician. He loved to sing. So he said, let's praise the Lord all the time. Don't stop it. Non-stop music. Right? I've seen Christians do non-stop music once a year or something like that. But he said all through the year, 365 days, 24 hours a day, non-stop music, non-stop singers. That is why here it says that they sing idly to the sound of instruments and invent for yourself music instruments like David. Now the mention here of David is important because if as some think that playing music instruments and having music and uh, such things is wrong, if that is what it, say, it is saying, then David making music instruments, coming up with new instruments. Yeah. They invented in David's days new instruments, it seems. So now we have invented a lot more new ones. You know. They invented a lot of new musical instruments and they played it. Is it all wrong? Is David singing wrong? David's music wrong? Is David's worship wrong? Are the singers wrong? Are the musicians wrong? Is David's whole approach to music wrong? How did David sing? He sang and danced to the Lord. We were singing that we will also dance to the Lord. Is dancing wrong? The fact that David danced, was it wrong? Was it unholy? Was it not right? There are people, there are segments in Christianity where people object to music itself, that you should not play music. You should have just a pitch pipe. Just give the pitch and start, you know. That's it. And some of them love this kind of verses, you know, they say, see? God condemns music. He completely condemns music because he said, you sing your songs idly to the sound of stringed instruments. So there goes all the guitar and piano and all that, you know. Invent for yourself music instruments. So every other instrument is included there. Everything goes out the door. No music instruments because we want to have a holy service. No music. Is he saying David's approach is wrong or David's music or singing is wrong? Not at all. David's music and David's approach to the worship of God was excellent. It pleased God. God was delighted in it. David sang, played music, danced, ate meats, drank fine wines, and used good perfumes for your information. How do I know? He was a king. And none of that was wrong. He represented Dominion. He represented dignity. He represented delight. When David sang and worshipped the Lord, when they played music instruments, when he arranged for a big party and ate well, there was eating and drinking and all of that, it was for the glory of God. It was uh, through that he was really exercising dominion, exercising his dignity, living in a dignified way and exercising delight. That was a positive thing which God enjoyed and appreciated and applauded. What I'm saying is there is a legitimate way to enjoy pleasure. Right? Now people are now only thinking, yeah, yeah, there has to be. You can't say all pleasure, all enjoyment is wrong. God is not a sadist, you know, that you don't know enjoyment, you know. I come from a, such a background that you can't even smile, you know. You'd be grim, you know. And if I'd believed these people, you know, then I'll have to think the whole heaven is filled with such people, you know. Sour-faced. Enjoyment of good kind is there. That's the truth. Enjoyment of bad kind is also there. That's the thing that he's pointing out here. David's enjoyment was of the good kind. These people were probably saying, what's wrong with us playing music? After all, David played, David sang, he used guitars, he used this, he used that. They were saying all that to give excuse for what their, their parties. But 
prophet is saying i condemn your music you idly sing to the strong uh, songs of the to the sound of the stringed instruments he says notice what he says idly idly means <laughs> there is nothing in it there is nothing good in it good is not coming oozing from it there is evil oozing from it when david used a stringed instrument there was some good coming out of it when you are playing it there was some evil coming out of it and prophet amos heard the music the sound of their music he heard something evil from it he sensed the evil in their music the sound was a bunch of noise when david sang there was a presence of god it was for the glory of god god's presence was ushered in god was lifted up and glorified but when these people sang and they played their instruments there was some evil in it god is not against your sleeping in a good bed but when they slept there was some evil in it god is not interested in knowing what bed you sleep in how much it cost for your information some people are worried about that you know how much did you pay for this anyway mind your business you know that's what you should tell them you know god is not interested in it god is not interested in what bed you slept as long as you slept in a good one he is interested in in you your dignity that's all why is he mad then why is the prophet mad saying you who sleep in ivory this will all come in end come to an end you ivory bed fellows you know why is he angry because it's not because they slept in a nice bed because in their sleeping there was evil they were evil people they oppressed others they looted others they took from others they unjustly dealt with others like i said to you kings ruled and under the kings there were officials uh, who collected everything and did everything uh, in the place of the king they were looters they were unjust people unkind people merciless people they were exploiting people so the people became poor and only the elite class became rich it is to those these verses are addressed god hates their ivory beds why because of the way that came about because of the way that uh, they possessed it because of the way they use it because of the thoughts because of their deeds because of their evil that they produce sleeping in that bed that is what god is condemning here i'm sure david slept in a good bed god didn't condemn him in their eating and drinking when they fried their meat god was smelling something bad uh, it doesn't sound good doesn't taste like something good is happening when david had a party and fried meat no problem god said that's good enjoy yourself in fact god says have a feast have a banquet enjoy but here he condemns their eating and drinking because in their eating and drinking also there was evil he sees evil in their eyes hears it in their shrill laughter that was heard there in their conversation there was evil and their noises the noises that they made was empty noises their fragrance and wine they did not taste good or smell good there was evil in it also evil 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 they were oppressors of other people unjust unkind there is no justice there is no righteousness in the way they lived there is no regard for god or the laws of god that is what god is condemning it has nothing to do with what kind of fragrance you bought hello not at all god is not interested in what bed you sleep in what fragrance you bought old spice or you know whatever musk or whatever you know he's not interested in all that 
But people take these verses like that. One fellow said, you can wear jewelry, but it should not hang from your ears. It must be stuck here. So where does it say that, man? Why are you making Bible to say whatever you want to say? <laughs> I mean, I've heard from people, you know, they use verses like this for their own convenience. God is not interested in any of those things. God brought them to a promised land, gave them all comfort, every convenience and every good thing beyond anything that they could imagine or ask. But they did not respect God or his laws and live by his ways. And that is what he is condemning. He's saying, you're enjoying all of this, but you don't know who gave it, for what purpose. That's why I condemn you, he said. The next statement, one is about David, right? You notice what it says about David. What David was not wrong, it was right, but what they did was wrong. That's where you draw the line. We are talking about where to draw the line between good and evil. What David did was good, what these people did is wrong. They both sang, both played instrument, everything, but that was right, this was wrong. Secondly, another line comes here in verse 6, it says, but are not grieved for the affliction of jo Joseph. You do all these things, sleep in beds and uh, good beds and music and wine and uh, perfume and all that. But then he says, but you're not grieved for the affliction of Joseph. What does that mean? It shows that these people did not care about the, what is going on around them, the social and economic ruin that has come upon the people as the rulers ate and drank and looted and enjoyed life. People were going to waste. Their bed poor is getting poorer. Rich is getting richer. They did not care about what is happening in their society. There is no burden. There is no sorrow. There is no grief. Nothing. They're simply enjoying them. As long as they got it, it's fine. They don't care whether anybody else is fine or not. And God says, that is what I hate about this. That is why I hate what you're doing. That is why I hate your enjoyment of these things. Because you never, you never carry within you a healthy grief about what is happening around you. There is no healthy sorrow that every Christian ought to have, every child of God ought to have about the evil that is around. While we are enjoying good things, we cannot enjoy like others. We must have a burden in our hearts and a grief that is godly in our hearts about the injustice, about what the wrongs that are around us. There is no sense of that. They're, they're numb to that. They're just into enjoyment of things for the sake of enjoyment. Don't have spiritual awareness at all. That is the point there. Then thirdly, look at verse 7. They shall now go captive as the first of the captives, and those who recline at the banquets shall be removed. It's talking about banquets. Is God against banquets? You should not have a banquet? Is that what it's saying? No. Even Jesus, when he preached about the gospel, he said, a man made a big feast and made a banquet and invited people to the banquet. This is how he preached the gospel. I think we should preach it like that also. More people will come if you invited them to a banquet. What we did is we said, come, follow Jesus, leave everything. Leave your good jobs, leave your good house, leave your good everything. You can't eat good, you can't dress good, you can't do anything. Come and follow Jesus. That's why nobody's coming. <laughs> Jesus didn't preach that kind of gospel. He said, come. A man made a big feast and invited people for dinner. Nobody showed up. The invited ones didn't show up. Then he went and got these unworthy people that are just standing in street corners. Have you heard people standing in the street corners? Yeah. Back when we were young, we used to just get together and just meet, and we didn't have a place to go. You know, if you went into a restaurant, it'll cost money, you know. So we just hung around, just talking, and for hours together, we'll hang around, talk. I remember one preacher came and said, Sam, what are you doing here? I said, simply standing. Simply standing. God called such people, <laughs> the useless ones, <laughs> the ones that didn't know what to do with their lives, the ones that didn't have any vision, the ones that didn't have any purpose, 
the ones that were simply just going about not knowing the direction for their lives. He said, well, a feast has been arranged. The invited ones, they didn't show up. Why don't you guys come because the food is going to go waste? There's a big feast arranged. Come on in. And all these guys, useless guys, turned up. And they became the guests now. <laughs> a lot of us came in like that. <laughs> what I'm saying is, Banquet is not bad. God himself, Jesus himself represents the gospel as a banquet that was arranged. And people are invited to feast at the table at that banquet. Banquet is not wrong. Then why is he condemning banquet and why is he saying that these people that are in the banquet will be removed? Why? The banquet will come to an end. God is not against banquet. It's a wrong kind of banquet. You're enjoying things, but no respect for God, God's laws, no honoring God, no living for the glory of God, not realizing the purpose of God. It's a total condemnation of these things. Now, this is all to the people of Israel, he's saying. But the context is a much, much bigger context. If you read the first chapter, you know, I don't want to go through the entire book of Amos, but if you read the first chapter from verse 3 to all the way to verse 13, I think, if you read, he's condemning the nations around. Six nations, he's condemning them for various reasons. Most of it is like this, you know, I, God not only delivered the people of Israel from their bondage and brought them to the promised land, God says, I also delivered them. Do you know many people that don't even know God, God delivered them, God has blessed them, God has blessed their business, God has blessed their families, God has delivered them, safeguarded them, protected them many times, they don't even know. The Edomites didn't know. The Ammonites didn't know. People in Tyre didn't know. Gaza, the people didn't know. The Philistines didn't know. God was actually helping them because God did not want everybody to be destroyed by, by just their wickedness. So he was intervening in history many times and saving people even though they are not God's people. Israel is God's people. God is not against everybody else. He's saving them. He says... You read the book of Amos, it's very interesting. I brought them out of bondage. I brought them out of slavery. I blessed them. These ungodly people. God says, I blessed them. I brought them out. I saved them. I protected them. But when they were brought out and when I empowered them and strengthened them and gave them a good place to stay and everything, they turned around and oppressed others. Whatever oppression they were going on, they were oppressing others with now. They should have realized that they suffered oppression and under the oppression they longed for freedom. They longed for dominion, dignity and delight. And I brought them into it. But they refused to give others dominion, dignity and delight. They treated bad others that were under them. They oppressed them. They took advantage and exploited them, he says. And in that context, Dealing with all those nations and pronouncing judgment, he then comes to the Israelites and pronounces judgment also because their problem also is the same. They were delivered from Egypt, from the slavery, brought into a good land. Now they are oppressing each other, doing injustice. There is no righteousness. The Egyptians treated them so badly. They lived under abject poverty and slavery. They should have learned a lesson that they should not do it to anybody else. But they come and they form a nation and they are doing it to one another. They are oppressing one another. He says, I empowered you, I gave you power. Not to abuse others. But I brought you up so that when you come up, you will bring others up with you. You will show the way for others to enter into dominion, delight and dignity. But you never did that. That is, the, that is the thing that the prophet is angry and pronouncing judgment about. Now, taking these kinds of verses, which are said in this context, and preaching to the church people who live in a democratic society, where you do a business, you know, you get yourself educated, you practice a profession, you work very hard, and uh, you become good at it, and you start a business, you employ 100 people under you, and you are helping so many people because your business is there, 100 people have got jobs, and such people come to church, and we are telling them, you rich, you're all going to go to hell because you're rich, simply because you're rich. You got too much, too much, too much, too much. <laughs> that is wrong, that's a wrong kind of application. We live in a totally different society. 
we don't live under kings and we don't live under that system that that kind of that level of wickedness and things like that we are not living under we are not at least the people that are coming to church the believers christian believers are not into it everybody like i said you know they are teachers and and business people and working in other professions they are not you know they are not going out and oppressing somebody and doing things they are ordinary people they are working their way up in a democratic setup we can't apply these things straight away to them and and condemn them for being well off you know and earning so much just the earning so much is not evil <laughs> because there is a good kind of delight and dominion and dignity and that's what it's all about at the cross at the cross where i first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away it was there by Yeah. Uh -huh.